Diving into photography can be both intimidating and overwhelming. With the vast amount of knowledge to learn, the time commitment it takes to develop your skills, and the sheer volume of gear options, it's pretty easy to feel like it's too much and you may as well not even start. But it's completely worth it, and can be pretty addictive once you start getting shots you love after you stick with it for a while. So today I'm going to be going over five pieces of gear I believe you need as a beginner to start taking great photos. Aside from a camera and lens, of course, I'm assuming you already have one of those. The first piece of gear you need is a decent tripod. A tri tripod is going to allow you to dip your toes into every photography niche and see what works for you and what you're most passionate about. Landscape, long exposure, macro, and astrophotography being a few examples where having a tripod is vital. And don't just buy the cheapest tripod you can find either as you'll be trusting it to hold up your camera which more than likely costs you hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Unless you got money to throw away in which case good on you. But then again why would you be buying the cheapest tripod anyway? The math ain't math. And in the cases of the niches I mentioned, your camera's gonna need to be completely still to get a sharp photo, enough light, and intentional motion. By intentional motion, I mean a car passing by, a waterfall or stream flowing, or a train crossing, and not the unintentional motion you get from camera shake when you're shooting at a low shutter speed. Because that'll just make the parts of your image that are supposed to be sharp, blurry instead. When you're starting out photography, your first camera more than likely doesn't have IBIS, and your first kit lens probably doesn't have stabilization either, so it makes the need for a tripod even greater. In the cases of the niches I mentioned, you will most often be shooting at a lower shutter speed than IBIS would even be able to help stabilize handheld anyways, so a tripod is a must. The next item will help you get great shots outdoors and help with long exposures during the day. That is an ND filter. Or a variable ND filter. This filter will help you from blowing out your images when you're shooting outdoors during the day because it acts like a pair of sunglasses to your lens by reducing the amount of light that comes into your camera. And it does so in a neutral way without changing the color of the light hence the name neutral density. So this filter will allow you to shoot with a wider aperture during the day and still get that nice bokeh in the background without blowing out your image entirely from the sunlight. It helps in the same way for long exposures. You need to be able to slow your shutter down which exposes your sensor longer to motion and frame but also lets in more light. So you need an ND filter to stop down your image so that you can capture the motion and frame without overexposing your photo. The same thing applies here as with the tripod. Don't just go with the cheapest one possible. I know it can be tempting but they can sometimes introduce a color cast into all of your photos even though they're not supposed to, and create an X pattern over your photo. And no one wants that. And if you plan on doing any video outdoors, you will absolutely need one of these. Next up is a circular polarizer filter or a CPL. If you plan on doing any car photography or architectural photography, this filter will do your photos wonders. Basically what this filter does is reduce any glare or reflections on reflective surfaces, which may distract in photos instead of enhancing them. So if you're gonna be shooting something with a reflective surface, depending on what look you're going for in your photo, one of these will make it look a lot better. This can also take reflections off water so that you can see below the surface, which can look really nice in some landscape shots involving water. Going along with the filter theme here is step down slash step up rings. Now I had no idea what these were when I first started, so hang on, I'll explain. This will help you save money in the long run because you'll be able to buy one of each of the largest filter types and adapt them to fit your various other lenses. That way you can focus on buying one really good quality ND filter, CPL, mist filter, and so on, instead of buying a bunch of cheap mediocre filters to fit all your different size lenses. The good news is they're really affordable too. I got a set of step up, step down rings made by K&F for $30 Canadian and they work great. Highly recommend them. Real quick, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the video this far. As a small channel, your likes, comments, and subscribes really mean a lot to me and help me to push my content out to more people. So if you're enjoying the video so far and getting some value out of it, please take a second to subscribe and hit that like button. Now, back to the video. With the filters, your camera, lens, tripod, you're gonna need something to transport them into your next shoot, so you can probably guess where I'm going with this next. That's right, the next item that you need is a good quality camera bag. And by good quality, I don't necessarily mean expensive. Look for a bag that has plenty of storage for future lens purchases, filters, batteries, etc. Make sure that it's well padded as well, as the purpose of a good quality camera bag isn't just to solely transport your gear, but also to protect it. This camera gear is very expensive and you want to protect it at all costs, especially during transport. Also, check to see if it has a tripod clip or holder, that way you can strap your tripod right to your camera bag and make it a lot easier to carry. It's also important to make sure that the material of the bag can withstand a bit of rain. Or a bag cover, as some bags do, to make sure that if you get caught in some rain, it's not going to soak through and damage your gear. So that's my top five items that I believe you must have as a beginner photographer so that you can explore every area of this craft. Let me know in the comments below if these helped you or if you have any photography gear suggestions that helped you get started in the beginning. If you're still deciding what camera to get, go watch my review of the Sony a7 III and whether it's worth it in 2023 going into 2024 right here.